Uh, listen, we have had we've gone through a year where there's been one team and one team only that's been the story. And that, of course, is the Boston Bruins. Do we go into the playoffs with the same kind of ideology? I'll throw it to Zeisberger first. You know, is it is it all about Boston, or are we going to pay attention to the other the other series? Well, if I listen to the white noise on the outside, I'm surprised that the cup isn't sitting over Dupont's right shoulder <laughs> right now, given the fact that I'm listening to stuff like and and look, Bob, I'm not a gambler. I know you're you've been you've delved into this in the past. Um, when when people are actually saying, would you take Boston or would you take the field? Oh. Am I just stupid? Don't answer that in thinking that the field is the overwhelming favorite. I mean, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. And look, at this is no disrespect to Boston. But when I look at that Boston Bruins team, and again, no disrespect to them, they don't remind me of the Montreal Canadiens that just lost eight, that lost eight games in an entire season in the mid seventies. I think are the Boston Bruins, the best team in the national hockey league. Yes. Are they beatable? Damn right. They are. And I'll tell you in the first round, when they play the Florida Panthers, I think they're going to beat them, but having to go up against Kachuk and Sam Bennett for, for first round series, you're not coming out of that series the same way you went into it. So um, all the, all the power to Boston, they should be favored. But I think there's a hell of a lot of teams out there that uh, get, that can knock them off or have the ability to knock them off um, if they're if they're firing on all cylinders. Well, we'll throw it to the Boston guy, Dupont. What do you think? I Are agree with a whole lot of what Mike said. Especially, I mean, I, I have to. So let's go back to a couple of dynasties here. Let's go Oilers dynasty and Islander dynasty. Would I have taken the field then? Yes, I would have. Uh, so I would take the field today because. Uh, this Boston team isn't as good as though. And I, I will say, I can remember in the thick of the Islander dynasty, a number of people, and I can I can remember these words coming straight from Harry Sinden. You know, they're good, but they're not so much better than any everybody else. Mm -hmm. At the time, comparing them to Islanders with those Hall of Famers. Now, that said, a lot of that Islander team went on to the Hall of Fame, and, no. and deservedly so. So... Uh, it's it's such a different era, and I don't mean to just fall back on that in terms of how it's played. We all know that, but such a different era today in terms of that Canadians dynasty didn't have real free agency uh, at the time. Yeah. Uh, it was it took a while for that to develop. And no salary cap and the salary cap hand <laughs> in hand. So if you had a Hall of Fame team in the seventies, you could keep a Hall of and you could keep it in the eighties, right? But sure. then we all know it. It sort of you know, what went to where it went, which is players are delighted by it. Who, who, I, personally, I'd rather see the old era, but, uh, but so yeah, they've got, they, they, they are, they are, they are, they, they, they are embedded with the vulnerability of the times, which is nobody, nobody's going to have a powerhouse team. Uh, and what they do have for them is excellent goaltending with, with the, uh, I, I just about to call him Vesna, but until then, Omar for now, and yeah. uh, they've got incredible depth. They, they, th this is as yeah. stacked a team in terms of solid constitution, right? Solid constitution doesn't necessarily win you the cup, but they've got a lot of beef on the bone here. That frankly, I've seen many Bruins teams go in as the favorite, maybe not the prohibitive favorite as we're seeing them today, and the beef falls off the bone pretty quickly. You know, everybody always talks about game 83 and everybody starts at zero. Um, and, and it's really how you manage adversity in the Stanley Cup playoffs. And the Bruins haven't had to manage adversity at all in 82 games this season. And so is that a real thing with the maturity of this squad, Kevin, with the leadership that the players have? Jim Montgomery has never been through this as a coach. Now, this is a different level for him. Um, you know, can this team fight off any adversity as, as Mike says, I mean, Florida is going to give them a run and, and how will they manage yep. that? Yeah. And we, we don't know. Now, now we're also presuming Florida is going to have a journeyman first time <laughs> goaltender and, yeah. and, and, and Alex Lyon. So I, I, I don't get just based on that alone. I don't give them a great chance. They did play the Bruins very well during the year. They've got a lot of talent, took them as we know, right to the, the uh the almost the final curtain call to get in 
but it's not a great team. I think the Bruins would have had a harder time with Islanders. Islanders yeah. have better goaltending. They have a more kind of a play in my by my eye, a playoff constitution. But to go back to your, your, your how you how you frame this in, in terms of what the Bruins are or what they aren't, I, I will tell you they've got the best goaltending in the league. They have yeah. two legit number one defensemen in in uh, Lindholm and in in uh, McAvoy. They picked up a one A by my eye in Orlov. So yeah. they've got all those good things. And what I will say, and I hate to go here with this, but I'm in the mood because I just did television here at the Globe. I, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to use the G word with with uh, Montgomery. I, I do think he's a genius. And and I, I could easily just say, I base that on that he's got 65 wins and nobody else, including Scotty, ever got 65 wins, right? Scotty, a genius. <laughs> but I do think, and this is based on one year, and you could we could do this show when the Bruins are down three nothing next week in the first round, and I'll look like a total idiot. But what I've watched thus far is a genius behind the bench. Now hold hold on here. You do know that as soon as this show gets published, my phone is going to ring, and Scotty's going to tell me. But John, I I, I couldn't win shootouts. I I didn't have a chance. You know we didn't have overtime. <laughs> You know, I had, oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to have yeah. ties. That team, I would have, I would have won more than sixty games with that team in '77. <laughs> well, when he calls, I hope Here's you take because I'd like to use it the Sunday note. <laughs> no, <laughs> I tell you, if he calls me, I am calling you, and you can put it All in right. the Sunday notes. And well, you know, Scotty, it, it, good. Scotty, you'll take exception to that, and I take <laughs> exception to something that Kevin said. The Boston Bruins do not have the best goaltending in the National Hockey League, uh, especially at playoff time. The Tampa Bay Lightning have Ooh. the best goaltender in the world. And you talked about a journeyman being in goal for Florida. How many less playoff wins does that journeyman have than the two Boston goalies combined in their careers? Answer? Uh, okay, so I give you those. I give you those three goalies. Who are you taking? I, I listen, I'm taking, I'm taking, I'm taking, oh no, of the, oh, Vasilevsky. Well, I'll tell you, he hasn't had a great year. No, no, tonight. not Vasilevsky. I'm not talking about this. this well, series. I'm, we're all taking all, Mark. We, we oh, know. Yeah. Right. We're, we're all taking all. Sure. Right. But I mean, him, I mean, a big pitcher. Uh, and, and John Vasilevsky, by the way, didn't have the greatest first four and a half games or five and a half games against the Leafs last year. Yeah. And then when it counted, he was the best goalie in the world, which he always seems to be when it comes to crunch time. Yeah, and I will say this too, and I totally agree with you because if I could pick any goaltender right now, in it, 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 top of the list, but, you know, actually, and defenseman too, I would go to Hedman. So I would go to Vasilevsky and Hedman. But I will tell you, if, if I if I if my memory serves me right, Vasilevsky was in net when they lost four straight to Columbus. Yes, that he was, was correct. <laughs> yeah. So so again, having the best player. In hockey, it, it, or the best goaltender, even it isn't entering with Michael Jordan. Right? No, that, that that's that's where I, go. I agree mean, on that. Just the nature of the sport being, you can have the best team, the best history, the best best goddamn coach, all of it, and it means it can mean bupkis eighty yeah. minutes into the series. Yeah, I'll tell you what. To, to, just to, to to build on Mike's point about the Bruins or the field, I'm going to hedge my bet because uh, I'm only going to do it in the East. I'm taking the Bruins in the East. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I am taking the Bruins over everybody in the East. It's just, to me, what they've done all season long, how deep they are, their goaltending's part of it. Bergeron's leadership's part of it. Jake DeBrusque's return to play as a goal scorer is part of it. Uh, you know, it, it, there, there's something on every line. Taylor Hall's coming back in, at, a, at a time when Taylor Hall can contribute. I'm, I'm, I may not take the field in the Stanley cup final, but I certainly am taking the Boston Bruins in the East to get to the Stanley cup final. Well, to your Taylor point, Hall, by the way, has a third line. That's right. Yeah. 12, you can get 12 minutes out of Taylor hall. Oh my goodness gracious. 